Excuse me, but is this a Miss Aubrey Anderson? Huh? Who are you? Are you trying to hit on me? No. I'm the husband of the victim of the accident you caused the other day. My name's Isaac Robbins, and my wife's name is Matilda Robbins. Don't pretend you don't remember. Oh, yeah, I do remember now. It just came back to me, lol. What do you want? Not what do you want. How do you plan on making up for what you did? In spite of the serious fact you ran my wife over and caused her a very serious injury, you've been ignoring all of my phone calls and actually had the nerve to block me. Luckily, I was able to find your messenger account using your phone number, which is how I'm speaking with you now. <laughs> so, those phone calls were about the accident, lol, whoopsie. I thought you were some kind of creep stalker, so I blocked your number. Although, it is kind of creepy that you would go out of your way to look up my messenger account. That's really weird, you know. Don't you feel ashamed? <laughs> Are you making fun of me? Do you have any idea of the gravity of the situation you're in? My wife's lying in a hospital bed right now after you ran her over because you were playing around on your phone instead of looking at the road. That would be bad enough on its own, but on top of that, You've ignored us for a whole four days and didn't show up to visit her in hospital once. Do you feel even an ounce of remorse for what you did? These things happen. It's not like I had a great time of it myself. I got injured and had to go to the hospital too, you know. It was super busy. I just haven't had the time to visit. It's not that I didn't want to. I know all about the extent of your injuries. You have a slight graze on your forehead, and that's it. You didn't even need to be admitted. You went home the same day, didn't you? It's been four days since then. There's no way you haven't had a chance to come. Even still, it's not like I have a duty to visit her. I mean, why would I? i visit my friends if I ran them over, but you guys are strangers to me. If she wasn't dawdling around the crosswalk like that... I wouldn't have hit her in the first place. I've seen faster snails. Yeah, that's right. The accident was her fault. What? Plus, she's injured me too. So we're both in the same boat here. Uh, would you just cut it out already? This is old news now. It only happened four days ago. It is most definitely not old news. You were so distracted by your phone, you ran my wife over right in the middle of a crossing after running a red light. Who the hell do you think you are, speaking about her like that? You broke Matilda's leg! So what? Phones heal, you know. She'll be fine before long. Just think of it as an opportunity for her to read books and learn sewing or something. Take a chill pill, sheesh. Plus, she's alive, isn't she? What's the big deal? Hopefully she learns her lesson and drives more safely from now on. Did you know the doctor told me I might have a small scar on my forehead for the rest of my life after this? A small scar! Isn't that just, like, the worst? Don't you feel guilty? What's more important, some random old woman's leg or my beautiful face? That's a rhetorical question, by the way. You will be paying me if it scars, won't you? You've got to be kidding me. Us? Pay you? The only reason you grazed your forehead is because you panicked and swerved into a guardrail after you realized you'd hit my wife. How dare you play the victim? You should be ashamed of yourself, young lady. You don't show any remorse. You don't apologize. Yet you have the nerve to demand money from the victim? Just what exactly are you hoping to achieve with this disgraceful attitude of yours? Ah, uh, a disgraceful attitude? I don't know what you mean. It's considered the right and proper thing to do for the perpetrator to visit the victim in hospital and apologize sincerely in these kinds of situations. Have you no humanity? The only one who should be paying compensation and medical bills is you. Have you no conception of any of this? Where are your morals, young lady? 
You can whine at me as much as you want, but I don't have any money to give you. I can't pay you something that doesn't exist. So sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> I told you to stop screwing me around! Is there no limit to your selfishness? How can you still think this is a joke? I'll be reporting this to your parents and college. Hey, don't do that. That'd be a real nuisance for me. My mom would be so mad if she knew I wrecked the car. Uh-huh, that's it. I just thought of, like, the best idea of all time. <laughs> Tell me, old man, how old are you? What? Where did that come from? Forget that. Just tell me. How old are you? 34. What does that have to do with anything? Don't try and change the subject. Well, 34? <laughs> Don't forget your Zimmer frame, old man. <laughs> hmm, maybe it's not too old, though. Okay, I think I can allow it. Okay, here's the idea, old man. So, about the accident the other day, I'm willing to go on a date with you if you agree to forget all about it. One whole day with me! How does that sound? <laughs> what? I'm free all day this Saturday. So, I'm willing to go on a date with you if that's what it takes to get you to shut up, Gramps. <laughs> so, what do you think? You'll go out with me, and then we can just forget about what happened, can't we? We can, can't we? <laughs> Lol. What on earth are you talking about? I don't understand. <laughs> your mind must be slowing down with your old age. Let me make it super easy to understand. If you let me off the hook and drop all this stuff about money over the accident the other day... I'll go on a date with you! One whole day that you get to spend with me! You should be counting your lucky stars! Chances like this don't come around for guys your age every day! Don't you think it sounds great? You get to hang out with a hot college student all day! How many times do I have to tell you to stop messing around? Cut it out already! I'm serious! Are you a total moron? There's no way you can make up for what you did to my wife with something like that! How preposterous! I refuse! Are you sure? I mean, are you really, really sure? How often do you get the chance to hang out with a hot college student? Not often, I'm guessing. <laughs> Lol. We can do whatever you want for the whole day. Anything. You really should know when to stop. I'm running out of patience with you! Hanging out with you wouldn't pay my wife's medical bills! Nor would it heal her broken leg! All I want is to see some sincerity! Duh! That's why I'm offering you the chance to go on a date with me! I'm sincerely asking you out on a date, lol! I'm offering you a date out of the goodness of my heart because you seem upset, lol! Surely, that's the very definition of sincerity, lol. Plus, if your wife's leg's broken, that means she won't be moving around for a while. Which means you're gonna end up all kinds of frustrated if you catch my drift. It's unhealthy to let that kind of energy build up, old man. And I'm kindly offering to help out. One thing's for sure. I look a damn sight better than that old hag, lol. Oh, is this why you don't want to go on a date with me? You're so old, it doesn't work anymore? <laughs> this is too hilarious. That's enough! I'm taking you to court! What? I've been waiting and waiting, sitting tight this whole time waiting for the phone to ring thinking you would phone us about settling out of court. But nothing came. Now I contact you and this is how you behave? Do you think I'm just going to take your insulting my injured wife lying down? I'll be filing criminal charges against you so you get the punishment you deserve. You'll be hearing from my lawyer over the coming days. Prepare yourself. 
Huh? I don't understand what that means, Gramps. Criminal charges? What's that? I know. You're trying to scare me by using big, fancy words. Well, it's not gonna work, lol. If you don't understand, I suggest you go and do some research, because reality is going to come knocking on your door very soon. Or are you so lacking in common sense that even something as simple as that is impossible? If you don't figure it out now, your future is going to be ripped away from you in the blink of an eye, and you're not even going to understand how it happened. Why? Because you'll have a criminal record, and you'll owe huge sums of money. And you know what? That's fine by me. I have no intention of negotiating a settlement with you now. I won't sign any petitions for sentence reduction, no matter how much you beg me. I'll see to it that you don't get away with this if it's the last thing I do. No, please, wait. I just looked it up. If I get a criminal record, that means I'll be a criminal. I'm gonna be a criminal. Me? No, that isn't the life I want to have. Please, wait. And what do you mean by losing my future and owing huge sums of money? That sounds bad. How do you not understand what I mean? Are you genuinely stupid? Did you accidentally buy a plank of wood instead of a phone? Investigate it by yourself. Maybe if you do, you'll finally realize how serious this situation is. Um... I looked up what criminal charges means and stuff about severe punishment, sentencing, and prison started coming up. Plus, there were tons of links about compensation payments. Does that mean what I think it means? You have got to be joking me! Like, oh my god, this can't be happening! Me in prison? Please tell me you're bluffing! I'm not joking. And I'm not bluffing either. In fact, I've never been more serious about anything. Not only did you run over and severely injure my wife, but you responded with the most childish, insolent, disrespectful attitude I've ever seen in a human being. Do you think for one moment I'm going to let you get away with that? Even if you just pretended to be remorseful, even if you just put on an act of being sorry, you are still barely in your 20s which basically makes you a child. And I would have been willing to discuss settlement out of court. But no, you had to push. You had to be cocky, to be arrogant, to insult me and my wife. Well, if that's how you want to play this, then I swear I will fight you to the last. No, just wait. I'll be in big trouble if you do that. It says online that it's hard for people with a criminal records to find work. Mom said she'll kick me out if I don't find a job when I graduate college. Ugh. Plus, it says I may have to pay tens of thousands of dollars in compensation. I don't have that kind of money. I don't even know if my mom and dad have that much. Just because I may have lightly brushed your wife as I went past her in the car? Why? What? How are you somehow suddenly surprised? You wouldn't discuss any kind of settlement. Your attitude's been a disgrace from the outset. You did practically everything you could to make me as angry as possible. You were as good as asking me to take you to court. I never asked you to do that. All I did was offer to go on a date with you instead of paying compensation. The offer still stands, by the way. How about that date? Put me off the hook and we can go for pizza and drinkies, baby. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not interested in going on a date with you? I hate stupid, vulgar women like you! I'm instinctually repulsed by the idea of letting you off the hook for running over and breaking my wife's leg by going on a date! Besides, it's not me you need to apologize to. It's my wife! I get it. I'll apologize to her, I swear! Which hospital is she at? I'll pay you the settlement money, too. Just name your figure. I can get a hold of it. Please, just don't take me to court. Anything but court. Too little, too late. I already told you we're past the point of apologies and settlement negotiations. From now on, 
I'm dedicating my life to ensure you get the heaviest punishment possible. I have nothing more to say to you. All further communications will be sent through my lawyer. Expect to hear from him soon. And like I said before, prepare yourself. Just stop it already. I told you, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea how much trouble I'll be in if you file criminal charges against me? I'll tell my dad if you do it. I swear I will. Believe me, you don't want to see my dad when he's angry. If you think you have something you need to tell him, then tell him. In any case, I plan on reporting this to your parents anyway, so it's probably in your best interest that he hear it from you first. I'll tell them all about how their daughter ran over my wife, then tried getting out of paying compensation or medical bills by offering to go on a date with me, the victim's husband. Mark my words. By the time I'm finished, they'll know full well what a terrible person their daughter is. No, no, no! Don't do it! Please don't tell my dad! He'll get mad at me! He'll stop paying for me to go to college! I'm begging you! Please hear me out! I'm afraid I can't do that. I can feel my IQ drop every time you speak. See you in court. After that, I blocked all contact from Aubrey Anderson. Then I left everything else to my lawyer. I don't know whether it's because they heard from my lawyer, but Aubrey's parents showed up at the hospital with faces as white as sheets. But no longer having any interest in apologies or settlement negotiations, we had the nurses tell them we weren't taking visitors and sent them on their way. The result? Aubrey Anderson was found guilty in court. The judge ordered her to pay us a whopping $40,000 in compensation and medical bills. Her parents were no longer willing to cover her tuition fees, so she was forced to drop out of college, and to add insult to injury, they kicked her out of the house and cut off all ties with her. She really was an irredeemable fool. Thankfully, my wife's leg healed nicely, and she made a full recovery. She was able to return to her normal life, pretty much unchanged from how it was before. And I'm very relieved about that. Mel, where are you right now? Where did your clothes and all your stuff go? Place is empty. Frankie's room too! Everything's gone! What's going on? Where did your Frankie go? Hello, Jay. I know this is sudden and might come as a surprise, but me and Frankie won't be coming back home. What? I met someone else. We're getting a divorce. Don't worry, I'll only be taking Frankie. You can keep Anthony. What? Where the hell did this come from? What's going on? Why? I'm doing this for Frankie's benefit. Let's face it, Jay, our son is a genius. He's always at the top of his class. He loves to study. He excels at every sport he tries. Everything he touches turns to gold. He wins the school art and music competitions every single year, too. There's no doubt about it, he's genuinely gifted. Which is why I think he deserves to be raised in the best environment possible and receive a superb education worthy of such high intellect. That's why he needs someone who's capable of providing financially for him. Let's face it, Jay, that's not you, is it? I'm sorry, but our son deserves better than what you can give him. What? I'm not filthy rich, so you're divorcing me and moving out with my son all of a sudden? I don't understand the logic! We have food on the table, do we not? I thought we were getting by! And why do you only want Frankie? None of this makes any sense! How do you think this is gonna make Anthony feel? Have you even thought about that? This is basically the same as saying, Hey son, you're not as smart as your brother, so I'm abandoning you! See ya! It's not basically the same. That's really what I'm doing. He's a good-for-nothing dullard that will never amount to anything. He's a failure of a human being. Son or not, what benefit is there in having someone like that around? What? How can you say that? Anthony is not a failure of a human being. Yes, he damn well is. His grades are below average in literally everything. 
He sucks at studying. He's so clumsy he doesn't even get picked in team sports. He's useless. He never won a single prize at school. No, it's worse than that. He never won a single thing in his life. How could he be described as anything other than a failure of a human being? Stop speaking about him like that! Anthony's doing his best. He works so hard and tries to meet your expectations of him. Just because he might not always meet them doesn't mean he's not trying. He skips on sleep to study, damn it! Besides, his grades might not be the best, but they did start going up over the last year. <sighs> Maybe they did start going up a little recently, but they're still only slightly above average. If that's the best he can do when he pushes his limits, he is obviously not cut out for anything special. Face it, he lost the dice roll. Frankie got the clever genes. All the study in the world is meaningless without results. Frankie's always been a natural at whatever he does. How did his big brother end up so useless? If we're honest, he'll only end up holding Frankie back. Do you want to end up with two failed children? Come on, are you seriously saying we should separate them? They're brothers and they love each other. They get on like a house on fire. How do you think they feel about being torn apart? They're still in elementary and middle school for crying out loud. It would crush them and you know it. Frankie would be more crushed by growing up to be a failure and realizing it was all because he received the poisonous influence of his loser brother for far too long. We have to be courageous enough to make the decision now before it's too late. Anyway, whether you like it or not, it's already decided. I'm taking Frankie because he's gifted. He's going to do great things one day. My new boyfriend is very wealthy. He's the CEO of a major donut chain, but he doesn't have any kids of his own. He said if Frankie can maintain his excellent grades until he graduates college, he'll adopt him and appoint him as successor to his company. And the cream of the intellectual crop, with the support of my new boyfriend, he'll be receiving a world-class education of the kind that most people can only dream of. Then one day, he'll be part of the business elite, the backbone of America. Which is precisely why he can't be allowed to associate with a pair of brain-dead morons like you two for one second longer. Me and Frankie are moving up in the world. And me and you will be cutting all ties. Just wait a sec, Mel. You don't just get to decide something like this all on your own. I won't accept it. I don't care whether you accept it or not. Whatever you say, I'm absolutely not taking his moron brother. I wouldn't if you paid me. I hope you and Anthony enjoy your new life together. It might be hard, what with you two having a combined IQ of less than 50 and all, but good luck. Goodbye forever. Hello, Jay. It's been a while. It's me, Mel. What do you want after all this time? Go away. I'd rather you weren't so rude. I was thinking of celebrating today, so I gave you a call. I heard the news about Anthony getting into med school. That's my boy. I always knew he'd do great things. He's got brains just like his mother. I can't tell you how proud this makes me. Oh, that's strange. I could have sworn you were calling him every name under the sun when we last spoke five years ago. Good for nothing loser, brain dead, a failure of a human being. You cast us both aside like pieces of trash. He really was a failure back then, though. I mean, come on, Jay. His grades were below average. Let me tell you, though, I was astonished when I heard he'd made it into med school. My jaw practically hit the floor. But you know what? Deep down, I always knew that he had what it took to go the distance, to really do something amazing with his life. You've got some nerve, woman. The only reason you want to snuggle up to him now is because he got into med school. I can read you like a book. You're as shallow as you are naive. He doesn't need you to celebrate for him. Now get lost. Oh, wait, just wait. That's not all I wanted to say. There's something else we have to talk about. There is? 
You mean you have more nonsensical crap to bore me with? <sighs> Today must be my lucky day, huh? Stop being so difficult and just listen. It's about Frankie. You know how his grades were so excellent back when I took him five years ago? Well, I'd like to trade him for Anthony. Excuse me? No one could deny he was the shame of our family back then. He was so clumsy, it was like he had two left feet, which naturally made him useless at sports, and his academic ability was even worse. But now he's in med school, I have absolutely no problem with acknowledging him as my son. Rather than betting everything on Frankie, whose performance at this point is so pathetic, he might not even make it past his college entrance exams. I think it would make more sense to invest our hopes for the future in Anthony, who's already proven he's the one who's going places by getting into med school. My husband agreed. He said if he's clever enough to get into med school, he'd have no problem with allowing him to live with us. Look, basically, you need to give me Anthony. Wow. Just when I thought you couldn't sink any lower, you speak about our boys like they're racehorses. I get it. Maybe there's a better way to say it, but when you think about it realistically, children are basically racehorses, aren't they? My life will change enormously depending on whether my sons succeed or not. It's only natural to want to hedge your bets on the promising one. You get that, right? Like hell I do! You're twisted! Anthony isn't some tool is solely existing to provide you with a comfortable life. Not only did you snatch Frankie away from his dad and brother, but now you're trying to manipulate Anthony like he's some pawn on a chessboard? Fine. If you don't want to give me Anthony, let's trade. What? I'll give you Frankie if you give me Anthony. Frankie might still only be in high school, but it is one of the most prestigious high schools in the country. I'll even cover all his tuition fees and send you regular child support payments. You can't say fairer than that. I think this is a really favorable trade for you. Wow, just hold on a sec. You want us to trade sons? What are they, Pokemon cards? Are you insane? How could you do that to Frankie? I thought you loved him. You'll probably find it eventually, so I may as well just tell you the truth. But Frankie moved out half a year ago. He did what? He was doing great until middle school. Top grades, always winning competitions and prizes. He was the golden boy. But when he moved up to high school, he met a girl on social media who clearly must have poisoned his mind. Because not long after they met, he left home. He did carry on going to school for a little while, and he did used to message me every now and then. But eventually, he stopped showing up. And even if I went to meet him or lied in wait where he couldn't see me, nothing. I have no idea where he went and have no way of getting him back. Frankie did that? My husband flipped a switch. I've never seen him so furious. He invested so much in that boy's education so he could be his successor and inherit the company one day. To think all it took to destroy it was some bimbo. He threatened to divorce me if I couldn't get Frankie back. No way. So the only reason you want Anthony is as a replacement for Frankie? You're using him as a tool to avoid getting divorced? If I'm completely honest, yes. We had an arrangement. My husband, being childless, said that if I could provide him with an adoptive son and successor to his company, he'd promise me a life of luxury as a celeb trophy wife. If I don't hurry up and find him a replacement, I'm gonna be on the streets. I didn't know it was actually possible for a single human being to be this despicable. You make me sick. I have no words. To think, part of me actually thought you were being sincere back then when you said you were doing what you did for Frankie. Turns out you were only ever thinking about yourself. Does your selfishness know no bounds? 
You can say what you want about me, I don't care. Are you gonna give me Anthony or not? I might not be able to trade him for Frankie, but who knows, maybe he'll go and live with you voluntarily. If Anthony can get into med school after being such a failure, anything's possible. Maybe Frankie could even become a respectable human being again if he lived with you. So what's it gonna be? Will you give me him? You must be deluded if you think even for a second I'm actually going to go along with this. You're something else. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee. You're the one who got abandoned. Huh? You probably thought you were the one abandoning me and Anthony. But the only one who actually got abandoned is you. What are you talking about? What does that mean? Frankie probably finally saw through your unparalleled selfishness and decided he was better off making a life for himself rather than relying on his deluded and very likely sociopathic mother. Basically, he had enough of you and didn't want to be around you a moment longer. There's no way Frankie would ever think that about me. He's a genius. How could anyone so wise and intelligent have a negative opinion of me? He left precisely because he's wise and intelligent. He probably realized that he was doomed to a life of being used and manipulated if he stayed with you. So he made a break for it and abandoned you. <laughs> That's my boy. Oh my god. After we spent so much money on him. Anyway, I won't be giving you Anthony, and we won't be doing any kind of trade. In fact, Anthony is adamant he never wants to see you again. I also have no intention of letting him come anywhere near someone as dangerous as you. You can beg me as much as you like. I'm simply going to ignore you, and I will absolutely not be helping you. Leave us alone forever. No, wait, please. I'm going to be in so much trouble if you don't help me. Please, I won't have anywhere to live. If I can't provide my husband with a replacement son, his company will be successorless. What do you propose he do about that, huh? Oh, is that my problem? Nope. <laughs> that has precisely zero to do with me and my sons. Zilch, nada. Please, Jay, I'm begging you. Will you at least let Anthony meet my husband? He can do what he likes as long as he agrees to inherit the company. If he doesn't, I'm gonna get kicked out. I'll be homeless. Could you live with yourself? Be honest, could you? Yes, very easily. It's actually kind of ironic, isn't it? You called Anthony a failure of a human being for so long. But ultimately... You're only capable of getting by by begging from and sponging off of others. Looks like you were the one that failed a human being all along. After that, Mel showed up at my front door after driving a very long way to try and persuade me. Or should I say, my old front door. I'd moved house two years back and made a point of not telling her my new address. So I was surprised to hear from my old neighbor about the strange woman making a racket next door. Apparently, she gave up eventually, and her efforts to contact me and Anthony ended in vain. I heard she also went to the police to see if they'd help her find Frankie, but they told her no crime had been committed and refused to have anything to do with it. Ultimately, her worst fears came true. Her husband divorced her and she was homeless. She somehow managed to scrape together the rent on a tiny cockroach-ridden apartment and currently spends her days in the depths of poverty, probably contemplating where it all went wrong. By the way, there's something I should come clean about. Frankie moved in with me and his brother six months ago. The stress of his mother constantly restricting his freedom, combined with the pressure put on by him by her husband to take over his company, came too much to bear. In order to pull off this vanishing act, he pretended he met a girl online and had decided to go and live with her. Then, as he moved up to high school, he put together a bare minimum of essential items and came home to live with me and his brother. I know he's my son, but if I do say so myself, that was one hell of a move. I was in awe of his decisiveness and strength of will. 
With his mom getting divorced, he couldn't afford to stay at the original high school he moved up to. So he moved to another one near our house. Now, he's living comfortably while doing the things that he wants to do, living life on his own term. As for Anthony, he was over the moon to be reunited with his brother. The three of us intend to live our lives in happiness and harmony from now on.